This is story about one of the greatest generals of all time, if not the greatest who never lost a battle or a fight. He crushed the superpowers of his time, he crushed the Persian Empire, he crushed the Romans, he conquered Iraq, he conquered Iran, he conquered Armenia, he conquered Jordan, he conquered Syria, the undefeated commander, the undefeated ruler, they called him Sephala, the sword of God. Khalid ibn al-Walid was a 7th century Arab military commander. His first battle was against Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, on behalf of the Quraysh. Khalid played an instrumental role in defeating Muhammad and his followers, during the Battle of Uhud in 625. It was the only battle Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, lost in his entire life. Then Khalid converted to Islam in the presence of Muhammad, who inducted him as an official military commander among the Muslims, and then gave him the title of Sef Allah, Sword of God. After that Khalid had series of battles and never lost on of them, Khalid led a few unorganized, untrained, newly united nomads and completely destroyed a far larger, well-trained and more advanced army. What makes him a great leader is that he won every battle, no matter how small his army was in relation to the number of the opponent. His tactics and strategies and plans led him to win every battle. With his versatile implementation of the indirect approach, Khalid would attack opposing armies from unexpected directions with multiple rapid flanking maneuvers. Furthermore, he was one of only a few commanders in history who used double envelopment to encircle and destroy armies larger than his own, launching perfectly timed cavalry attacks on the opponent's flanks. During the Battle of Mutah Khalid coordinated the safe withdrawal of Muslim troops against the Byzantines. He also led the Bedouins under the Muslim army during the Muslim conquest of Mecca in 629 to 630 and the Battle of Hunayn in 630. After Muhammad's death, Khalid was appointed to Najd and al yamama with the purpose of suppressing or subjugating Arab tribes who were opposed to the nascent Muslim state. This campaign culminated in Khalid's victory over Arab rebel leaders. Tuleha and Musalima at the Battle of Buzaka in 632 and the Battle of Yamama in 633. Khalid subsequently moved against the largely Christian Arab tribes and the Sasanian Persian garrisons of the Euphrates Valley in Iraq. He was reassigned by Abu Bakr to command the Muslim armies in Syria, and he led his men there on an unconventional march across a long, waterless stretch of the Syrian desert boosting his reputation as a military strategist. As a result of decisive victories led by Khalid against the Byzantines at Ajnadain, 634, Fal, 634 or 635, Damascus, 634 to 635. And the Battle of the Yarmouk was a major battle between the army of the Byzantine Empire and the Muslim forces of the Rashidun Caliphate. The battle that will change history is about to take a place. The battle consisted of a series of engagements that lasted for six days near the Yarmouk River, along what are now the borders of Syria, Jordan. This battle really great so I will tell the story of the battle. After the devastating blow to the Sassanid Persians at Firas, the Muslim Arab forces, under the command of Khalid ibn al-Walid, took on the army of the Christian Byzantine Empire at Yarmouk near the border of modern-day Syria and Jordan. After the victory at Firas, Khalid had virtually conquered Mesopotamia. Seeking to halt Muslim expansion, the Byzantines rallied all available forces. Byzantine Emperor Heraclius, the victor of Nineveh, allied himself with the Sassanids, the two empires seeking to pool their depleted resources to stop the Arab advance. For his part, Heraclius assembled a large army of Byzantines, Slavs, Franks, and Christian Arabs and stationed them at Antioch in northern Syria. Heraclius sought to stall any battle by exploring diplomatic options while he waited for more forces to arrive from his Sassanid ally. Meanwhile, Alarmed that the Byzantine-led force had assembled in Syria while Muslim forces were fragmented into at least four separate groups, 
Khalid called a council of war and successfully argued that the entire Arab army be united to face Heraclius. The sizes of the forces are disputed by modern historians. Donner holds the Byzantines outnumbered the Muslims four to one. When the two armies met, it was Heraclius's intention to exercise caution and wear the Muslims down by a series of small engagements. But the Sassanids never arrived and, after six days attritional fighting, Kala drew the Byzantines into a large-scale pitched battle. This ended with the Byzantines retreating in disarray, charged by the Arabs with a sand-laden wind behind them. Many of the fleeing Byzantine troops fell to their deaths over a narrow ravine. Yarmouk was Khalid's greatest victory and ended Byzantine rule in Syria. I will end the story by Khalid's most scariest quote. Khalid told Vaughn and Yarmouk, in their negotiation, embrace Islam and you will be safe. If you refuse, there can only be war between us and you will face men who love death as you love life. Khalid died in Medina or Homs never be defeated in his entire life.